There is a mental health crisis happening in our rural communities, and it could also affect what you eat for dinner. A recent study revealed nearly one in three farmers thinks of dying by suicide at least once a month. Just take that in. Well, Christy Diaz shows us how organizations across the state are pouring millions of dollars to support the men and women in Georgia's agriculture. Six generations of the Eccles family grew this orchard. So our farm's been in my family since 1912. I think that's kind of the biggest pressure, really, that you don't want to, you know, something that's been in your family for over 100 years, you want to be able to pass it down. As the rest of the world greets the fall, many Georgia farmers are still facing fallout from the spring. For Drew Eccles of Jaymore Farms, it was the freeze back in March that crippled his peaches. That's actually freeze damage right there. We did end up losing about 70% of our crop. You know, it's a $2 million crop for us here at Jaymore, and uh, to lose 70% of that, you know, basically over just a couple nights, uh, it is a tough pill to swallow. He tried to make up for it by planting more tomatoes, corn, and pumpkins. It's not the same as, as peach money, but it, you know, it helps. Keeps you busy, keeps everybody employed. But the constant stress is exhausting. You know, if it's not rain, it's a freeze. If it's not a freeze, it's a hailstorm. It's just always something. Commissioner Kevin Tanner with the Department of Behavioral Health and Developmental Disabilities says that's why they've partnered with the Department of Agriculture and UGA Extension to find ways to support Georgia farmers. Farmers uh, are very reluctant to seek help. It's been ingrained in us that we're strong, tough, people that have to take care of our own issues and problems. Earlier this year, they held a farm stress summit to highlight programs and resources. The 988 crisis line now offers a texting option for those hesitant to talk. And they're hosting listening forums, often led by the rural faith community, to give farmers a safe space to speak up. I think it's important that we all understand that it's okay not to be okay, and it's okay to ask for help. Slowly but surely, this stoic group of workers is starting to buy into it. I think you just got to keep your mind in the, in, the, in the right direction. That helps you swallow that pill just a little bit to know other people care about what's going on on your farm. Now, the first listening session was also the Sunbelt Ag Expo, but they plan to hold more across the state. We will link you to several more resources in this story we have on 11alive.com. And starting today, President Biden and several of his cabinet members will spend two weeks barnstorming, that's what they're calling it, across the country. He will be announcing $5 billion in new investments to support rural America, including specific programs to help a lot of the local farmers and communities, the ones that Christy just talked about. Now, the tour will also focus on opportunities for the next generation of ag leaders.